Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by CFFC welterweight Micah Terrell. Micah, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Micah, you got a fight coming up this Saturday night at CFFC 45. You were originally supposed to face Ultimate Fighter veteran Matt Secord at this event, but some things have changed, and now you're going to be taking on former Bellator welterweight champion Lyman Good in the co-main event for the CFFC interim welterweight championship. So I'm just curious, how did this fight all come together? Did CFFC come to you and offer you this fight, or did you find out about this injury and offer up your services to CFFC, and they said, you know, hey, we like this matchup, we'll put it together? I'm just curious, how did this fight all come together? Um, no, I mean, actually, uh, they, they approached me, they approached my manager. Um, you know, I've been training for a fight on this card. Uh, this was actually a fight that I wanted, you know, and I was looking, hopefully I got the title, like, the shot in the near future mm-hmm. after uh, one or two more wins with them. Um, but you know, they, they called my uh, manager and, you know, they offered it. He's like, hey, you know, he said, why don't you take a couple hours to, uh, you know, kind of take you out and talk it over with your guys. And uh, all I did was put the phone down for about 30 seconds. I told him to hold on. And, um, you know, I took a little breath and I was like, you know what, bring it. You know, I, I'm ready for it. So it was definitely, it was, it was a no questions asked. Um, it's an opportunity of a lifetime for me. I mean, I'm at that spot, you know, I'm, it's a make or break. And, and this right here is the spot that's going to make me. Mm-hmm. CFFC announced this fight on Facebook on Sunday. So I'm just curious, when exactly did you get the offer for this fight? Offer, um, it was it was Friday. Um, it's Friday afternoon is when I found out. Uh, we had to keep it low key just because you know we we had to uh, go through all the legal legal matters and everything doing um, you know right. So that was pretty much uh, when I found out. Let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to when you were preparing to fight Matt Secord at CFFC 45. The old saying is your next fight is always your biggest fight, but considering, you know, he's he's someone who has big show experience, he fought on the Ultimate Fighter. Going into that fight, were you looking at that fight as the biggest fight of your career? Yeah, I mean, up to the date, that that's yeah. what I was looking for. Uh, you know, I know the one way through the U- to the UFC, obviously, his ultimate goal, uh, you know, is to fight top-ranked guys. So I actually asked for that fight a while ago, um, and I just got it um, just now. So it was... Uh, it was something mentally that I have been ready for, you know, uh, physically I was ready for. It. And, and the good thing about it is, you know, I, I didn't care what big stage he was on because I, I see myself, you know, being there. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, to me it doesn't matter where you fall, you fall how many fights you fight. You know, you're, you know, at night you're coming to fight me, you know. Mm-hmm. So right. that's pretty much all that matters to me. Mm-hmm. In your eyes, how much bigger of a fight is this Lyman Good fight from the Seacord fight? Uh, it's about two steps away. It's it's, it's the biggest it's the biggest fight of my career, as as you were saying. Yeah, um, and it, the the uh, you know the magnitude of it, you know, in my head and in my mind, you know, the, the, obviously it's for the CFSC uh, Inter Welterweight World Championship, and uh, that that opportunity in itself is just just huge. But uh, for me, I, I'm taking it as the biggest fight, you know. But at, at the same time, it's just like any other fight. For what I planned, you know, I'm going to dictate the pace. I'm going to dictate the fight, and, and it's just going to go. It'll go how I want it. Mm-hmm. Now, with this fight being put together last minute, what have you been doing this week? Obviously, you said you got the offer on Friday, so you're fighting on Saturday. So there, you know, a little bit over a week of preparation for Lyman Good. What have you been doing? Um, well, uh, I mean, my more or less, it was just you know tweaking. Tweaking a few things, you know, with my uh, with my stand up coach. Uh, so obviously, uh, Saquor is a big time wrestler. Uh, you know, loves Jay. You know, I never, I don't take that from him at all. He's he's really good on the ground. That's where he wants it. So I was playing on standing up, and uh, Lyman likes to stand and bang, and so do I. Um, and so pretty much, I mean, it was just tweaking a little bit of things on my game plan and just stepping up the cardio. I mean, it's a five, it's a five round fight to me. That's not a big deal since I was already training for a three-round, and uh, a three-round for me is I can go five to ten anyway. So so five rounds just more more time for me, but I you know, no, I think it was about 89, 98% of my fights don't make it out of the first round anyway. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, we're, right. we're, we're, we're here to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This fight has very high stakes for Lyman Good. Obviously, He's a former world champion. He was the Bellator welterweight champion. He had that little stint on the Ultimate Fighter. Didn't do very well. Came to CFFC. Fought against Matt Secord. Defeated him. Then 
had a fight against Jonathan Webb where he was dominating, but then it got changed to no contest. So he really wants to prove to people that he's back to the level he once was when he was a world champion. And also, he really wants a rematch with Jonathan Webb. And, and to get that rematch, he has to go through you on February 7th and capture the interim CFFC welterweight title. Now, you go, coming into this fight, you really have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Would you agree with that? Exactly. It's a, it's a win-win for me. I mean, there's no pressure on me. Um, it's just, you know, I, I, I know how good I am. You know, my, my coaches and my teammates know how good I am. And it's just, now this is actually, you know, it's the time to prove it and show to everybody, you know, you know, I've won five out of my last six. Um, mentally, I, I'm stronger than ever. And, you know, I, I feel no pressure at all. I get to come in. I stepped up when they asked me, you know, um, and, and it's something that I wanted. You know, I wanted from the get-go. I, I've been studying Ryman for a while. Uh, knowing that I, I hopefully I get the chance to fight him or uh, one of their top guys that he's going to be fighting. So um, to me, it's you know it, it's it was an honor that they asked me, and, and, and it was just you know I just feel it's my time. You know, God, God opens every door for a reason, so I'm just going to run right through it. Mm-hmm. You're very familiar with his career and what he's done in the past, and, and like you said, you, you've been studying him for a while now. I'm just curious. Obviously, he's really doing his homework right now. You know, I, I, I got to assume that that he's been trying to study everything that he can of you, trying to find video, trying to find all that stuff. But realistically, how much do you think he knows about you? Um, I mean, you, that, that's a tough question because, like, what I got out there, you know, I got a, uh, I got a bunch of uh, uh, videos out there, whether it's boxing, amateur, amateur cage fights, and stuff. Not many, not many of my highlights out there. Um, I like to keep them to myself so people can kind of see what I worked on, what I needed to work on, and they can kind of take me at that. Um, so, you know, I mean, hopefully he's doing his homework, you know, and he's, he, I know he's coming out to fight. I'm coming out to fight. I don't, I don't think it's going to matter how much he knows about me right now anyway. It, it won't make a difference once we step into that cage on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Stepping into this situation, who do you think has the advantage? Obviously, Lyman Good was preparing to fight a five-round fight, but he wasn't preparing to fight you, and then you were stepping in on short notice, but like I said, you're not Lyman Good's original opponent. He was supposed to fight Elijah Harshbarger. So I'm just curious, do you feel that you have the advantage coming into this one with the situation being what it is, or do you think Lyman has a slight advantage, or do you think we're all kind of on equal ground here because of the situation? Um, I mean, to be honest with, with all that, I mean, it, if he was training for a five-round fight, yeah, obviously the guy, I know the guy that he was... Um, Supposed to fight Elijah Harshwarder is really really good guy, um, real tough fighter. Especially you know he and he's more of a ground guy. So I, I think it's funny. Uh, I think it's a vice versa flip for both of us. You know we, we were both expecting to fight wrestlers, ground guys, and now now we're getting to you know fight where our comfortability is and you know where we're confident. So uh, I don't overall I, I can't say anybody has the advantage. Obviously you know with his name being out there and that I mean people a lot of people can think that he has the advantage. He might think he has the advantage. But um, another thing for me, positive in training. I mean, I, I train, I train to fight, and I train to fight for numerous and numerous, numerous, numerous rounds. So, um, if if it's going to come down to a thing of nutrition and, and nutrition, and then making through the five rounds, I won't have a problem. Mm-hmm. Just curious, are you still training out of Conquest MMA? Uh, yes, I'm. T- I'm training currently training out of uh, Team Conquest out of uh, Millersville, Maryland. Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm just curious, who are some of your coaches and who are some of the people that you've been training with, sparring with, etc., trying to get ready for this fight? So, uh, I mean, for the for the original fight and everything that I was sparring with, um, I was sparring with a couple uh, uh, wrestle, college, collegiate rep, wrestlers. One's actually going to Arizona in the next year to wrestle. And then um, my uh, my black belt uh, for BJJ Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is Vicente Jr. He's a fourth-degree black belt under uh, De La Hiva. And um, he's he's world known. He's he's you know won world world championships a few times. Pan Am's active current um, Pan Am's and world uh, masters champ right now. Um, and I get to work with him you know two to three times a week. So my ground game is not a problem at all. And my stand up, you know, I've just been uh, working with uh, my boxing coaches and, and my Muay Thai coach um, Sean, and then recently. So and also a friend of ours, a friend of mine, stepped out and offered to help me. Uh, for this fight coming up to uh, Jason Farrell, who's been been really dialing in my hands really well. Um, he's got a couple fighters for a uh, glory fight on Saturday. I mean, I'm sorry, on Friday. He's going to make it up on Saturday. You started your professional MMA career two and three, but since then you're on a three fight win streak, and all three of those fights have either ended by way of 
knockout or TKL. So I'm just curious, what's clicked for you? What what's all come together that's allowed you to go on this three fight win streak? What are you doing? What are you doing differently than you were during that run of two and three? So, um, uh, you know, pretty much. I mean, 100. percent It's mental. It's a mental game. I'm, I'm mentally strong, and I honestly feel that nobody in my weight class, anybody I come up against, is going to beat me. Um, before, when I when I lost a few, um, you know, if you get to watch those fights, I don't know if you find them on YouTube or whatever, you'll see I'm dominating every single fight that I fought in and that I've lost, um, you know, in the first two. And I just, I, I, for some reason, just, you know, I slipped up. I just wasn't, I wasn't there mentally. I didn't, you know, I didn't stick to my game plan. I just kind of, you know, I just wasn't strong, you know. And, and I, I'm actually glad I, I went through that and I started off um, with that record because that's pretty much what's molded me today. Um, and I've been put to the ringer constantly, constantly, constantly. And it's just, it's just, you know, helped me to put me exactly where I'm at. And that's why when you ask, you know, who has a better advantage on this, uh, this fight, um, he can be as comfortable as in the cage, but I'm, I'm just as comfortable and I'm ready for it. Mm-hmm. I'm mentally there. I mean, I wouldn't have taken the fight if there was any, any, any doubt in my mind that I couldn't beat him. Mm-hmm. You're still relatively new to the game. I mean, you've competed for a while in MMA, but as a pro, only since 2012, and you've obviously done boxing and some other stuff. But to MMA, you're you're still pretty new in the game. But and you're you're still a young guy. You know, 31 to me is young. But you know, there'll be some people who who say it at 31. You now you need to make a push. You need to really get the ball rolling. Uh, would you agree with those people? Would you agree with? The people will say, "Hey, if you got, if you're going to strike now to get into a big show, now it's got to be the time." Would you agree with those yeah. people? Yeah, I mean, in hindsight, yeah. I mean, you you have to look at you know the overall. I mean, you got you know the guys, you know Captain America, um, who they call it, um, uh, fought Chuck Liddell for the. I mean, Randy Couture. Randy Couture. He's you know he was forty forty four what seven forty five forty seven, and yeah. he was still fighting. You got uh, Dan Henderson. He didn't really have a great showing. He's forty. You know, thirty-eight, forty, something. You know, older guys. So, you know, to me, the 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 age age range isn't really that big of a thing because uh, I've been competing my entire life in sports. You know, I played D one ball, uh, baseball, had scholarship. You know, Indians, everything was looking at me when I was out of high school. So, it, it's to me, I'm always I, I'm competitive. You know, no matter what, and uh, I uh, just look at this as you know, I, I this is kind of my push because at the same time, I mean, I am thirty-one, but this is my fifth fight in under a uh, calendar year. Mm-hmm. And you know I'm I'm fixing to go four and one, and then after that calendar year starts over, and I'll take another five fights. You know I, I stay ready so I can fight every two months. You know staying healthy um, and and trying. So you know I, this is my fight. You know it'll put me at uh, my record at six and three um, with with a championship, and then I, I should be highly regarded. Look at especially high finish fights because mm-hmm. you know they don't like in the UFC they don't like a boring fights. You know any any. Uh, Organization really, like CFSC is up. They don't really want a boring fight. They want to fight. You know what I mean? Um, they want finishes. They don't like a lot of UDs, 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 unanimous decisions and all. Right. Um, and you know, I, I expect to go and leave nothing out there. Right. Right. I couldn't agree with you more. That's what I've been saying for for many many years. Joe Silva, Sean Shelby, Dana White, all the people at the UFC. They don't want to see decisions, and and they definitely don't want to see decisions outside the UFC. So you know, their thought process is: if you're not finishing guys outside the UFC, how are you possibly going to start finishing guys in the UFC? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I I, I could. I mean, that's basically my mindset. So you know, I uh, they'll take a guy. They'll take a guy that's you know six and three like me with uh, you know five six knockouts. Um, over a guy that's ten and one with uh, you know eight or nine unanimous decisions with one submission or something. Right? So um, I, I know what my game plan is. I know where I'm, I, I stand, and I, and I I feel I'm one of the best. I just haven't been seen yet. Mm-hmm. In the past, you've talked about another organization that you fought for because during your pro career here, you've only fought for two organizations, CFFC and Shogun Fights, and in the past you've talked very highly about Shogun Fights, so I'm just curious, how does CFFC compare to Shogun Fights? Um, so obviously, um, CFFC is, is you know ranked ninth, eighth, ninth in the world for uh, mm-hmm. promotions uh, for pro venues and uh, you know professional um, organizations. It, it's, it's uncanny, for one, how they treat you. Um, for them, the professionalism and um, you know the hospitality they, they extend to you, uh, and then obviously the level of competition is right under the UFC. Clearly, that's why they're getting calls back to back. Now, Shogun, Shogun's the same way. Um, it's falling on a little bit bigger of a stage as far as uh, if you've actually been to a UFC show, 
it um, it's pretty much you know it emulates that. It, it's it's nothing shy of of what you see on TV, and um, they they treat you you know with the same respect and everything. The reason um, Shogun, I, I love fighting for them one, you know, because it's a money thing for me. Obviously, this is a business, so you know I'm trying to survive and provide for my family as well. Well, I have a pretty good following, and I've been there. Uh, their biggest ticket sale for the last six fights I sold, you know, this past one, I was almost $18,000 worth of just local local people. So I got a pretty big following around this area, um, you know, where I grew up in, you know, and, and up and down the East Coast. So I fighting for them with the, um, the talent that we got coming up, you know, it just gets better and better every day. It's, you, you know, with, with Shogun. And, um, you know, I look forward to, uh, you know, uh, keep, keep fighting with them in the future, um, whatever, wherever it takes me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Micah, just a couple more questions before I let you go, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk because I know this is a very big fight for you, so and it is a fight week, so I really appreciate it. Now, oh, yeah. when was the last time you fought this high up on a card? You're fighting in the co-main event on Saturday night. Is this the first time you've been fighting that high on a card? No, my actual very first pro fight was uh, I was the main event because I sold almost $20,000 mm-hmm. worth of tickets, so they decided to make me the, the main event. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, so... That was at the Shogun fight, and I'm um, I'm okay with that because you know at first it, it kind of rattled me a little bit. I'm like, crap! I you know I've been training. I, I'm used to fighting at night, but not you know not at 11:30. You know when it's late. You know how's my body going to react? So that was that's part of the mental game that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know it kind of it kind of bothered me. Then my second fight, I was the co-main event again. Um, you know, and everything it just. It, it just kind of bothered me, but now, um, now I thrive on it. You know, I, I uh, you know, I'm not folding like a lawn chair. You know, I, I'm, I'm staying straight like a, like a bar of steel. So it's um, for me that doesn't matter. That's just fine. I, I, I go out there and I love the attention. I love it. I absolutely soak it up. I was the main event on my last fight um, in Baltimore um, against a big rivalry of mine. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of bad blood, and you know, and went out and you know took care of business in the first round. And uh, just hearing that crowd roar, roar is just, you know, nothing's, nothing's better getting your hand raised. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've been talking a lot about your mental game, and you t- touched on it a little bit earlier about how you were winning fights, but for whatever reason you were always on the losing end because it was something that, that happened that you could have that you could have prevented. It, it's kind of like a, a little bit of Chael Sonnen, I guess you could say. He had that problem a lot. He was dominating all these fights, but for whatever reason... He dominates Jeremy Horn, but he gets submitted. He dominates Paul Filio, but he gets submitted. Like he had all these problems. Exactly. I'm just curious, how were you able to overcome this? Um, just because. Um, so, so the first fight, first fight that really threw me for a loop. Um, you know, I, I I knocked the kid, pretty much knocked the kid out. Got up, I took his back, and I threw one punch. And then Big Dan Mergulata. I mean, everybody's familiar with him, UFC mm-hmm. ref. Right. He uh, he comes in and you know says that was an illegal punch to the back of the head with no warning. No, no, no said, hey, watch, but he nothing. He just immediately said, that's illegal, took me off the guy's back, deducted a point, and then also gave, you know, that guy five minutes to recover, which I think was a turning point. So we started staying up again. I started taking taking it to him again, not worrying about it. And then for, for some instance, I just, you know, I, I just like, well, I, I thought, for instance, I was, I was screwing up by doing something. It, it was just like a lack of judgment, and I went in and got caught in the submission. Same with the last of the fight after that. I, uh, I um, was beating the guy for three rounds, um, didn't listen to my coaches, and uh, I picked the guy up, took him down right into another guillotine um, where I went to sleep. So it, um, from that point on, I told myself there's no, there's, no which, there's no way anybody can beat me in any which way. You can't be stand up, you can't be on the ground, you're not going to beat me, you're not going to outwork me in cardio. Um, and me mentally knowing that, that I've done absolutely everything possible, if that bell rings at the end of three rounds, at the end of five rounds, and I'm still standing, I will come out victorious. Do you use visualization during your training camps? And if so, how have you envisioned this fight ending? Um, yeah, I do. I always, always visualize because um, you got to perceive, believe, and achieve um, is how I look at it. Um, if, you, if you don't have a goal, you're not going to reach it. You know, if you don't have something there out in front of you, you know, seeing that you've already done it, you know, you got to play this this over and over. In the past couple of days, I've played this fight probably over 400 times in my head. Um, every every which scenario. Um, every which outcome, every which way I'm going to move. So more or less, it's like a game of chess when I'm in there. Um, but um, for me, I have the power to knock anybody out. So um, I, I foresee, you know, being a tough fight. Like I said, I mean, the guy's been been through the ringer. He's sixteen to three, former Bellator champ. Um, you know, I, I don't 
I don't discredit him at all. You know, he's one of the best in the world, and I'm just great, grateful to have the opportunity to go against him. Um, but going the way that I visualize it, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, a knockout um, coming up real soon, TK, ref stoppage or knockout. Mike, uh, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, I got uh, yeah to all my fans out there. Uh, thank you for the support, especially for the ones that are coming out to New Jersey, making it all the way from home to make it um to, to make it a memorable night. And uh, yeah, I got a, quite a few sponsors: World of Beer, uh, Beef dot org, uh, my old line CrossFit, my conditioning coaches, my team Conquest, Coach Lance. Um, who else do I got? I got tons and tons of alloy wheels. Um, First Washington Mortgage. If I uh, NLP, if I forgot any of you guys, you know I'll get you guys a shout out on a Saturday night. Micah, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck Saturday night at CFFC 45 against Lyman Good. Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the call.